What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me today. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit the like button because that is the most important thing you can do with me on this channel. What it does is that it helps to make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get the notifications and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm as well. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, please do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms to your family and friends to inform them on this news and information. And yes, that does also help to give me a slight boost in the YouTube algorithm also. And with the introduction out of the way, let's get into today's news. And today we are headed over to CNN Studios because the Democrats are in panic mode after the tragic debate performance from Joe Biden last night against Donald Trump. Not only are they in panic mode, but if I can quote Van Jones, who we are going to discuss today, this was painful. It was painful for them to watch, and it was painful for all of us to watch as well, so much so to the point that on CNN, Van Jones and many others are now openly calling for Joe Biden's replacement because there is no way that he can move forward as the DNC nominee with a performance like what he put on last night against Donald Trump, where he was fumbling and bumbling all over the place, proving all of us right that he is mentally unfit to be president of the United States. And once again, it leads you to believe after a performance like that last night, who's really in control? Who's really running the country when Joe Biden can barely get through a sentence without having to cough? It's just something to think about, if you ask me. Now, let's take a moment to get back to Van Jones, though, because Van Jones seemingly was fighting back tears last night on CNN when he was discussing how much he loves Joe Biden and that it hurts to say that Joe Biden has to go, but he has to go. And if there's one thing that we know for sure concerning Van Jones, when it comes to crying on CNN, he's more than good for it. Let us never forget the classic moment when Van Jones broke down crying like a baby on national television over Joe Biden's victory during the 2020 election. You would have thought that Joe Joe Biden unseated Mussolini with the way that Van Jones was crying crocodile tears. What are your thoughts? <clears throat> it's, um, well, it's easier to be a parent this morning. It's easier to be a dad. It's easier, to, it's easier to tell your kids character matters. It matters. Telling the truth matters. Being a good person matters. And it's easier for a whole lot of people. If you're Muslim in this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no reason. <laughs> it's a vindication for a lot of people who have really suffered you know, the, the, I can't breathe. You know, that wasn't just George Floyd. That was a lot of people that felt that they couldn't breathe. Now let's take a listen to how Van Jones discussed how painful it was to sit back and watch Joe Biden fail so miserably against Donald Trump in last night's debate. Um, that was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. And he looked, you know, I'll give you the analysis, you know, you kind of have the, the old man versus the con man. Uh, I can walk you through how I'm supposed to see it and say it, but I just want to speak from my heart. Um, I love that guy. That's a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can. Uh, but he had a test to meet tonight uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base. And he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain. 
of what we saw tonight. So there we have it. Van Jones and the entire cast of CNN stating the obvious and once again stating something that we all knew from the beginning. Joe Biden has no business being president of the United States, uh, let alone running for office again at his age. Mentally, he is just not there. But once again, that is stating the obvious. But now here's what's interesting. How easy is it going to be for the Democrats to replace Joe Biden, because it's not as easy as you all might think. And I want to take a moment to dive into that here as we get into this political article. And mind you, I'm only going to read about two or three paragraphs here. I strongly suggest you read this article in its entirety for yourself because it's a really good read and gives you some good inside information on how the process works on removing Joe Biden from the ticket. But it's not going to be as easy as many people think it will be. And here is how this article explains that. While the party technically does have a system for nominating a fresh candidate at the convention in the event of a candidate declining a nomination, the entire process is a creaky one that hasn't been considered in decades. There's no mechanism by which other party leaders can throw Biden off the ticket. According to the Democratic National Committee rules, instead, if anyone in the party wants to replace him, it is through throwing it to an open nominating process on the convention floor. Biden won around 95% of the nearly 4,000 delegates in this year's primaries who are pledged but not committed to backing Biden. That means there's no legal requirement that they vote for Biden in the roll call. But Biden's campaign has had a role in choosing these delegates at state conventions across the country, and at least half of them would have to spurn him in order to deny him the nomination. But if Biden agreed to decline his party's nomination, it would kick off an open and unpredictable process of picking a replacement. And there you have it. What it would require for them to smoothly replace Joe Biden is that Biden would have to himself step down. But therein lies the problem, because if you've been following the great tragedy of Joe Biden long enough, you all know that the DNC has been trying to get Biden to step down, but he refuses to step down. His pride is in the way. His pride will not allow him to step down. He's refusing to do so, and this is what's causing a lot of issues. Remember, it wasn't that long ago, I believe it was sometime last year, when Dean Phillips, a member of the DNC leadership team, openly came on Meet the Press and stated, we need to primary Joe Biden. We need other Democrats to step up and primary him to remove him from running against Donald Trump. He was one of the first people to step up and say this from the DNC. Since then, others have quietly stated it, but now the quiet part is being spoken out loud. And with all that being said, that does it for today's news. So please make sure you hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video out on your social media platforms. And also don't forget to follow me on Telegram at TD Media Group. The link to my Telegram will be in the description box below and pinned in the comment section as well. Thank you all for your time. And until the next video, peace and have a great afternoon.